Hello, welcome to the Brooks Group's Brief and R. You're in the right place. We'll be starting in just a minute or two. Hello, and welcome to the Brooks Group's Brief and R, where we promise to be brief, bright, and gone in 19 minutes or less. My name is Anita Greenland, and I am the Vice President of Client Experience here at the Brooks Group, and I'm here with our guest, Ann Iverson, Senior Instructional Designer with Allen Interactions. Welcome, Ann. Thanks, Anita. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. Oh, we are so glad to have you. Uh, Allen Interactions specializes in developing modern learning solutions, which is our topic today. As a matter of fact, the two of our companies uh, work, recently worked together on a project for the modern learner, which is why Ann and I had the idea for today's topic. So our title is Why Your Sales Training Should Focus on Modern Learners, Not Just Millennials. So, Ann, we've heard all about it. If we want to grow our business, we have to focus on millennials, 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 millennials. Sometimes it seems like that's all we hear about, isn't it? So Absolutely. Let's, yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's quickly define exactly who these millennials are that we're talking about and reading about and worrying about all the time. Yeah, well, Anita, we do. We certainly do hear a lot about millennials. It seems like more now than any other generation. Um, so who are millennials? According to most sources, millennials are the generation that follows Generation X, um, with birth years ranging from the early 1980s to the year 2000. So why is that such a big deal? What's all the hype? You know, there is a lot of focus on this generation, um, especially when we're talking about how to train employees. Companies widely believe that this group needs specialized treatment and learning approaches to keep them engaged and teach them new skills. Um, I think really, Anita, it's because millennials are typically associated with the rise of technology, but the truth is that most of the workforce today is constantly immersed in technology. I know everybody out there is going, yes, mm. yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I got that. My hand's raised. Yeah, right. The prevalence of technology has changed the way we all work and learn, whether they fall into the millennial category or not. So when you're thinking about training your sales employees, many experts in the learning and development field now are guiding us to say, stop focusing on millennial learners and actually any generation and start focusing on the desired performance outcomes. There are actually five generations in the workforce right now, and you need all of your sales staff to be effective to get the most out of the training that you provide for them. You know, that, and that's a really good point that you make as far as not focusing on just that one generation, the millennials, or any of the other generations, because you run the risk of excluding all of the other generations. Um, exactly. So, Anne. What I hear you saying is that we should adapt our training to accommodate the way that people of all ages learn in the modern era. And we, we need to be focused on the modern learner instead of just millennials. So, you know, when we were working with you guys at Allen Interactions, you, you really helped us to understand the modern learner. So maybe you could help and those of, that are on the call today have a better understanding of the modern learner. 
Yeah, exactly. And Anita, I know when we worked together, we learned a lot about your demographic and the fact that these learners span all generations, really. Um, and we're all modern learners. So typically, the modern learner has sort of three major characteristics. Um, shorter attention spans is one. Um, also, the need for instant gratification. And then we're always on, all of us, right? Mm. It's like we're always on. Well, like 24-7 <laughs> if we're always on, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, whether you're 22 or 62, it seems like everything is moving at a faster pace. I mean, I, I feel like I've had to, to pick up my pace because I didn't, I didn't come along. I wouldn't consider myself at least a, a modern learner, but now I am because I've come, become that by default. So, you know, how, how do we adapt in to this type of learner? Yeah, and I will, I will say one of the characteristics for that modern learning is technology and social media, mm -hmm. and we're all on it. And so that's what's really fueling, fueling that. So mm -hmm. um, modern learners engage really when they know the learning event is relevant to them. Um, if it's going to help them improve their performance, they really pay attention rather than dumping a lot of content. Because think about it, we carry our devices around with us. We can get all the content we mm -hmm. could dream of. Mm -hmm. So it's really that just in time, just for me mindset. And if learners know they have to repeat the performance on the, on the job, their attention really is further heightened. Sure. Um, one of the ways that we really appeal to learners um, now is um, it used to be sort of old school to list out learning objectives before courses, but it, that really didn't grab the learner. It really didn't tell them, hey, what's in it for me? So now we really try to grab the learner attention by telling them um, specifically how they'll benefit from the course. Well, what, what, would be, what would be an example of that for a salesperson or for some sales training? Yeah, well, if you think about what would grab a salesperson, that's a really good question. Things like, um, do you want to increase your hourly wage? How about, do you want to turn angry customers into loyal fans? How about this one? Do you want to meet your monthly sales goals? So right away, you know, the learner perks up and pays attention because we're hitting their hot buttons, and that's going to hook them right away. And then the key is once they're hooked, to use good design techniques like immersing the learner in a relatable environment, and that really sustains their engagement. And that, that was a new concept to me when we were working together, that relatable environment. Can you elaborate a little bit on that for our audience? Oh, absolutely. Um, that really is the context that the learner can relate to. It's their work environment. So, for example, if you're a car salesperson, we're going to place you in a car lot, not in a hotel lobby or a fast food kitchen. We're going to immerse the learner in their real environment. It just seems it all of a sudden becomes a lot more credible to them. And what I have seen is it opens up their mind to learning uh, a, a lot more readily. It just by putting them in that relatable environment, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the, another big buzzword in training these days seems to be micro learning or micro size or modular. What's that all about? Well, it really is all about how we consume content. So we know the modern learner consumes content now in shorter bursts. So gone are the days, Anita, of maybe what you and I experienced of those mm -hmm. hours-long e-learning. Mm -hmm. um, you remember we dreaded that? <laughs> yes. That snooze Eight fest, really. Hours complete the e-learning. E so... Um, we are absolutely used to interacting with information in such a shorter time frame. If you think about it, like how you consume um, content, Vine, for example, it tells a story with only six, six seconds of video. And that's perfect for our shorter attention spans. And the reality is um, people can only absorb so much information at one time. After that, content really just becomes scrap learning. Mm. 
So what we do is we organize activities into core interactions and what we did for your course is um, we really focused on those interactions that achieve a single performance goal. So rather instead of trying to have the learner do everything, the whole sales process in one sitting, we really broke it up um, into those single performance goals and that way we can get the most out of the learner's training time. You know, I, I know one thing that, that, that you guys really helped bring to life, and it's something that I've learned from being a live instructor in live classroom training, is the, the importance of game mechanics. And bringing that into the classroom makes learning a lot more fun. And when you're having fun learning, you just naturally open your mind up and therefore absorb more of the training, retain more of the training, and then ultimately apply more of it back on the job, which typically results in being more successful in the job. And really, that's the end goal of all training is to create more success on the job. And so the, the incorporating the gaming elements really is something that we wanted to carry over, especially into our e-learning, as well as into our live training. So, but there's a difference, though, between games and gaming elements. So to explain that a little bit more. Help define that difference for our audience. Sure. Well, we've all played games. Um, and so when you think of a game, you don't always think about a learning activity. You don't connect those two. Um, and it's true, if you think about some games like, for example, Candy Crush, which it seems like all everybody's playing now, um, the goal of that really is, is entertainment. It's fun, and there's nothing wrong with that. But with learning games, that, that we can incorporate some of those game mechanics, that's what really engages the learners and improves their performance. So things like we can steal from the whole gaming industry that we know works, that keeps learners engaged are things like scoring, badging, you have to have a challenge, um, includes a bit of risk and competition. Um, these are all things that we like to design for our learners so that they actually build confidence and confidence, that's that success on the mm -hmm. job you were referring to, um, while they're having fun. So it's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. And you know, one of the one of the challenges that you guys built into one of our activities or is one of the gaming elements that you guys came up with was a, a beat the clock mechanism and yeah. we have just in the two weeks that we've gone live with our e-learning we have gotten such rave reviews about about that interaction as well as many of the other interactions because it does have that challenge in it it has that risk and you know they want they want to beat the clock and it, it's it's just makes it more exciting yeah i mean when you think about it you can complete you know, complete a training, but when you know you're on the clock, it adds that extra level of excitement and all of a sudden your adrenaline is kicks in and you're right in the game. And so, yeah, those are the kinds of things we like to incorporate just to make it more fun and, and really put that learner at their heightened attention. Yeah. So, you know, this, this adapted type of training that we've talked about, these, these, three ways to adapt your sales training for both live classroom training as well as online classroom training, you know, both are very, very important. So, you know, in, in live classroom sales training, the instructor, they've got to apply all these techniques that we talked about in the classroom full of learners that often have all five of those generations right there in the classroom live. They've got to engage the learners with different scenarios that relate to their selling environment. And they need to teach in those small chunks and, and make it interactive and engaging and fun. Oh, absolutely. Um, instructor led follows the same principles um, for online sales training. Companies do need to be careful not to assume that all e-learning will engage the modern learner. It's like we've been saying, there are elements that you need to design in um, to make that learner, to help them feel motivated to complete and to actually apply what they've learned back on the job. And just as a boring classroom lecture isn't going to engage a live audience, if you think about death by PowerPoint, mm -hmm. which is looking through a slideshow, you cannot follow that, those principles and expect them to apply online. In other words, boring e-learning doesn't work, period. Yeah, right. Now, I know one question that we got 
uh, that was sent ahead of time was what, what's the best way to evaluate if training, whether it's live training or online training, is meeting all of these requirements for the modern learner. And I, I think one of the key tips I, I know that our clients uh, do use and, and we used when we were looking for an e-learning solution is seeing a demo, demo, a live demonstration in one way or another. I think that really helps to, to bring it to life. And when we were, when we were working, and I'm sure you recall when we were testing the, when we were alpha testing the e-learning, we had actual users, potential users come in and go through the program so that they could, they could really experience it. So I think there's nothing beats actual experience when it, whether it comes to classroom training or online training. Yeah, absolutely. We truly, truly believe and try to build in a user testing um, period with each of our our e-learnings because you're right you really can't evaluate it until you it, until you experience it's it. It's like that see it so touch it feel it kind of thing. Yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, something that I am super excited to share with you all is uh, we've alluded to this partnership that we've created with Allen Interactions and I think the output has been something wonderful and beautiful. We just finished working hey. together on what I hope is the first of many, many projects to come. So we, many of you that are on the call are probably familiar with our impact selling system. We have been training the selling system and refining the selling system for over 40 years now. And with the help and expertise of Allen Interactions, we have now created an e-learning version of impact, which had, up to this point had primarily been a live instructor led program. And now we have it in the e-learning format. We call it Impact U. And we just launched it a couple of weeks ago. Our phones and emails have been burning up with inquiries. And, you know, I think, and what really attracted us to Allen Interactions, besides your expertise and longevity and track record in the e-learning space, was your use of the CCAF model. So, and take just a minute and describe what CCAF means and how that applies to the modern learner. Yeah, CCF is, an, is um, sort of our tried and true model. It stands for Context, Challenge, Activity, Feedback, CCAF. And it really is our model to make sure our learning solutions are motivating, memorable, and meaningful. And that's what we call our three M's. And if we were live, I'd be throwing out bags of M&Ms to you right now. <laughs> um, but actually, Anita, you, you obviously probably remember that we started our work with you all with a savvy start. And that's our design and brainstorming session. So you and your team got to experience CCAF firsthand. We did all those fun activities. Um, to make sure that we're designing interactions that really work. No boring e-learning and interactions mm -hmm. that truly really improve learner performance for that on-the-job success. Well, I'll tell you, I'm a believer. It was a really great experience, and, I, and, the, and the end result was a great product. One, one that we're certainly excited about. So you know, if, if any of you are interested in learning more about Impact U or requesting a free demo, just go to brooksgroup.com and follow the instructions and we'll be happy to hook up with you and give you a demonstration like we've been talking about. Uh, we've got just literally two minutes left and another question did come in. And that question is, you know, and I'll throw this out to you, Ann, you know, how much time should an employee spend doing e-learning each day or each week? What, what should that look like? Oh, that's just an awesome question. You know, honestly, we let the learner gauge that. Um, we really do think that the learner should drive their own performance and actually own it. So mm -hmm. in terms of time, it's really difficult to say, um, but it really is up to the learner. And, and the other thing to think about is that perhaps the learner goes through the entire um, course and decides, huh, I really need help in one particular area. What is beautiful about micro learning is that the learner could come back and complete that course whenever they want. So then it really does become more about performance support um, so I just say, you know, the learner gets to gauge. They get, they get to do just in time, just for me. 
Yeah. And, and because of that guidance, you know, we came up with a study guide for Impact You that does recommend they go through it all, you know, at a relatively quickly time period, but then they take it module by module and really absorb it on their own time and, and, and on their own schedule and then do that just in time training where they go back and maybe review, maybe they're not so good at questioning and they go back and review that module. So anyway, I greatly, and thank you so much for joining us today. And for those of you on the call, if you have interest and want to see any more about Impact You, just go to brooksgroup.com. Thanks for being here. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye now. Bye.